drive here for Geno Smith and the Seahawks. First down and 10. Here's Walker. Changes his mind and to the 27 yard line. I mean, he said it changes his mind, the vision to be able to cut back. I mean, that, that looked like a run to the right the whole way. Right. But this is vision. But this is all the, the training and the, and the intention of these runs. You see, Kenneth Walker, he starts downhill fast, slows down, and decides, I don't want to go that way, come back out the backside. But it puts pressure on the wide receivers yes. to always stay on your blocks. And big plays happen when wide receivers do that. Backside, they let them go. So it was a minimal gain there, but at least it was a positive yardage. Screen to Walker. At the 30. And Walker, good job after the catch before Reese makes the tackle. We met with Kenneth Walker yesterday, and he said his dad told him when he was a kid, you have to use the entire field. And that line <laughs> yeah. has stuck with him. And ironically, Kenneth Walker is from Tennessee, a Frazier, Tennessee native. He went to Arlington High School in Tennessee. So he said, oh, this is like a homecoming game for you. And he said, no, actually, my parents are already in Seattle <laughs> right. waiting for me to get home so we can celebrate Christmas together. Yeah. So what, what do you ask him about his pace when he runs? Like, the way that he goes about it. He said it comes from the RPO or the, the zone read. At Wake Forest. Stuff that they used to do at Wake Forest. It was always slow. Third down and three. Quick pass. Metcalf has it. First down, Seattle. DK with his third catch in a 12-yard gain. I mean, I love this from Geno Smith, uh, Geno Smith just giving some ground and trusting DK Metcalf to win on that one-step slant. He just gives a hard move to the right, cuts it inside, creates space. But that space is there because Tennessee decides to pressure. Pressure up the middle. It leaves a void in the defense over, over the middle of the field. Geno does a good job of retreating and giving a good accurate ball to DK Metcalf. Yeah, but here Seattle is again in the red zone where they've stalled a couple of times. Gino four for four on this drive. Walker to the left side this time. And he maybe gets a yard out of it. Yeah, Tiki, you said they stalled, but we got to credit this Tennessee red zone defense, number one in the NFL. And we asked Mike Vrabel what's been the key in the red zone this year. And he said, we've been playing with urgency and resiliency in the red zone defensively. Yeah, they're playing with that urgency and resiliency. He also mentioned that. They've simplified a little bit. They have a call or two that they know, they trust, and they stick with it. And today, it's been a lot of the split safety coverage, two shell coverage, forcing right here. You're going to see this kind of picket fence at the top, forcing tight windows to throw the football in. Second and nine. Gino to the end zone. He's got Metcalf down there. One-handed grab for the end. No signal yet. And they're saying he's out of bounds. Yeah, that was close. Yeah, that was very close. DK Metcalf gets both feet in. The question is, when does he have full possession? Now that's, that's a catch. touchdown. He's dragging the feet. That's, that's going to be a touchdown. Unfortunately, Pete Carroll's going to have to challenge this. And he does. And he does. <laughs> he does. Now, there was really no signal down in that end no. zone, and when nobody did anything, I just assumed it was incomplete, <laughs> and they started walking back to the huddle. We never had Seattle's a signal. challenging the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass. The play is under review. Timeout. Yeah, Trey Avery has a hold of DK Metcalf's right arm, and the only thing he can do is grab it with a challenge, and that is a touchdown for DK Metcalf, his eighth touchdown of the season. So Jason Myers is on for the extra point. They're making a three-point Seattle lead, and it is good. Now keep in mind, even though it was a successful challenge, since Pete Carroll lost the challenge already in this game, he's out of challenges the rest of the way. But obviously had to throw the flag on that one, and Pete Carroll is happy that his team has taken the lead. I mean, this is a fantastic throw and catch from DK Metcalf, and they've been playing that split safety coverage. The one-on-one -on -one is on the outside, right? There's a lot of bodies in the middle of the field, but the one-on-one -on -one is outside. Good job exposing that. Great throw, great one-handed catch to start. Get the right hand on there at the end, drag the foot. Good body awareness there from DK Metcalf. A 96-yard touchdown drive, and on that drive, Geno Smith was 5 of 5 for 66 yards. Aided, of course, by 20 yards and penalties, one legal contact, and then the personal foul. You know, 
the, the points are so massive, obviously, but just to give their defense, you know, a bit of a breather. Tennessee have been running the ball uh, pretty effectively there in the third quarter, and to give those guys a chance to get get some rest on the sideline, get their breath back, and to come finish this fourth quarter strong, I, I just think that was massive for so many reasons for the Seahawks. DK Metcalf now has 56 yards receiving, so he's two yards away from 1,000 on the season. As Myers kicks it away to Moore, and Moore with a fair catch at the three. The NFL on CBS streams live on the field. The Titans have run 43 offensive plays, and they only have one play that's gone for longer than 20 yards. It was a 23-yard run by Ryan Tannehill. Dillard is still in at left tackle for the injured Jalen Duncan. Kevin Raider in motion. That action. Tannehill looking deep. Pump fakes and down he goes. He took a big shot from Bobby Wagner. Yeah, this is physical. They go with the play action pass. Right. Bobby Wagner. It's holding this, right? Yeah. And it's that delayed blitz. He kind of has to take Derrick Henry. If he goes to the flat, Derrick Henry stays in and he shoots the gap, comes up, and lays the wood on. Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, those are green dogs. As soon as the running back doesn't release, you go get the quarterback. Fourth sack today by the Seattle defense. And now Tennessee's offensive line has allowed 54 sacks this year. Last year, they allowed 49 for the entire year, which was fifth worst. Here's Spears on the screen. Has some blockers in front of Tajay Spears. Good job after the catch across the 30 and down at the 31. A 12-yard gain for the rookie at a two-lane. Yeah, we talked earlier. I think it was Seattle that threw the screen to the tight end. This is why you throw it to running backs and wide receivers. Because all it takes is one little crease for Tajay Spears. Cuts inside, sees the block coming, breaks the tackle. Got the cavalry right. out in front. Now you got third and short as opposed to a third and really long situation after that set. Third down and three. Wagner's coming again. Tannehill gets rid of it. He's got Spears, and Spears picks up the first. Kobe Bryant on the stop, but not before Tajay Spears picks up the first down. This was so nifty by Tajay Spears. So he catches this ball into the flat. And usually you don't want to stop your feet. But Dude. by stopping his feet, shuffling. It goes into the triple threat position <laughs> right. in basketball right. right there. Tony Gonzalez used to do this with me all the time. He'd front up the defense, <laughs> kind of take a look at it, get into the triple threat. But it throws defenders well, off. Well, it made, it made Kobe Bryant stop his feet. Yes. And then as soon as that happened, he had the advantage and picks up the first down. Derrick Henry up the middle and charges his way close to the 40-yard line. Let's take a look at next-gen stats powered by AWS and the pressure on Ryan Tannehill today. Yeah, when they haven't blitzed, he's been efficient. 8 of 12, 60 yards, but when they have gotten pressure and they've gotten home, he's taken some shots. I would expect the Seattle defense to continue to be aggressive, send some more pressure, try and disrupt some of the rhythm that Tannehill has gotten into. Tannehill's been hit seven times on the afternoon. But nine and a half to go. Tannehill on the move, chased by Edwards, throws along the sideline. Burks has it, was the inbounds. The refs are talking about it, and they say no, incomplete. Mafe had coverage down the field. Yeah, good patience here by Tano. Goes with the little pump fake and then going to try and get this late on the sideline. Didn't look like Traylon Burks got that left foot down. It looked like the right foot was on the ground. But I'm not sure he was able to drag. I don't know. He might have been able to drag that. It's hard to see the toe. But there's no, they're not protesting it, so. There it is. It's a close one. And Mike Vrabel will challenge. I think it was a catch. Communicating up in the booth with his eye in the sky, John Stretch Stryker, the director of football administration. So the Tennessee is challenging, ruling on the field of an incomplete pass. The play is under review. Timeout. 
So Mike Vrabel has thrown the is a catch for Burks. Yeah, yeah, he did a great job, Jalen Burks, of dragging that back foot. And again, this is likely DeAndre Hopkins training going on here, because this is what D Hop does all the time. As soon as the ball is about to get into his grasp, you see his feet start to drag immediately. Traylon Burks did the same thing. Yeah, they say that post that front foot, drag the back foot. He actually drove the, the back foot and then posted the front foot second, regardless of how you do it. Excellent catch. And he did a great job prior to it of kind of slow playing it, not running himself too close to the boundary, saving some space for Tannehill to be able to deliver that football. First catch today for Burks, the second year man out of Arkansas. First down and 10. Tannehill right back to the air, looking for Henry on the screen. Blockers ahead. Henry sheds a tackle. Henry spins his way for a first down. Wagner on the tackle after a gain of 11. Well, this is this has been a Tennessee staple for a long time. Is showing this deep play action pass down the field. Ryan uh, Tannehill's eyes down the field to throw the screen to the backside, give it to Henry, get him out in space with the. the the old line out in front. It's a good way to pick up 10 yards. It's a great call around the logo, too, because Tiki, you mentioned it earlier. A lot of teams expect shots, big plays in that part of the field and call the screen. Good timing on the call by Tim Kelly. Yo, I, I thought you found Turtles. Henry. That's nice cut back. Derrick Henry across the 30. And very close to a first down. Mafe on the tackle. A different Derrick Henry than a week ago. Yeah, it's a lot of success in this run game. Again, you see him just wash everybody down. Derrick Henry comes out the back door, makes a guy miss at the line of scrimmage, and gets his body going forward. And I'll tell you what, that was an awesome effort by right. Chica Conquo, too, of coming across and, you know, going at the legs of the linebacker, giving Derrick Henry enough space to be able to get into that second level. 83 yards rushing. He entered the day needing 116 for 1,000 on the year. This short of a first down. It's second and one. Henry. And stop for a loss this time. Bobby Wagner right in the middle of it. Yeah, this was unfortunately predictable from the Seattle Seahawks in the or from the from the Tennessee Titans and the Seahawks knew how to stop this one. Get penetration. We talked about it earlier. You get penetration against Derrick Henry. Don't let him get his feet going downhill. It's an easier tackle for Bobby Wagner than the previous one. I don't think any tackles are easy on Derrick Henry. But that's about the easiest you're going to get. Right. Bobby Wagner is about as sure of a tackler as there is in this league and has been for a long time. Eighth tackle of the day for Wagner. It's third and three. Tennessee two for two, converting third downs on this drive. They run it with Spears, and Spears appears to be just short. And now a big decision for Mike Vrabel. Does he try to tie the game with a field goal or go for it on fourth and inches? Looks like they're going with tempo. And I'd expect a quarterback sneak here. Fast moving. Tannehill under center. Will he take the snap? Tannehill ends up Spears trying to push forward. And with forward progress, it looks like he's got enough. First down, Tennessee. Yeah, an interesting situation here for the Tennessee Titans because they want to go fast. They want to try to get the Seahawks to jump off sides. And so they get up, dummy call. Yeah. But then they know they have to run the football because they're going to go for it. But Tajay Spears is in the backfield. Yeah, it's not Derrick Henry. Not Derek Henry. And I think a lot of times teams have a code word for that, to ha have you hurry up and go. And initially, it's a quarterback sneak. And then if you don't get a vacant A-gap, somebody over the center, you check that thing out and you go to the run play. Good design right there. Good execution. I told you this one, old guys. Like, I got to power. The big guy is back in. Derrick Henry in the backfield. Play clock with one. They run it with Spears again. He's taken down for a loss. That's a great play by the rookie Derek Hall, second round pick out of Auburn. A loss of three. Yeah, Derek Hall just undercuts the tight end here. Comes right underneath. There's really no chance for Kevin Brainer to, to cut that off unless he, unless he falls starts. Yeah, it's good timing of the call right. to have that kind of slant pattern going by all of the defensive linemen heading to their left, and he runs basically right into the run. Second and 13, a flag is down. This one's blown dead. And a false start against Tennessee. False start. Offense number 71. 
Five yard penalty, second down. That's on Dillard, who's in at left tackle for the injured Duncan. The third false start today against Tennessee. Yeah, trying to get out of his set too early. They got a pass called right here, and he's trying to get into that set because Derek Hall is just getting ready to go, and he wants to get as much ground as he can, just goes a little bit too early there. But this continues to be the same thing. You know, they get themselves inside the 30, and it's penalties. It's different things that have kind of disrupted their rhythm, thrown them off schedule. They've been able to overcome it a couple of times. But at this part of the field, it's critical to stay on schedule. Be about a 50-yard field goal from here. Tannehill, quick pass, gets it out to Spears. And Spears to the 26-yard line. Gets some of that penalty yardage back, a gain of six. As this drive continues, approaching seven and a half minutes for Tennessee. Geno Smith watching and waiting. 13th play coming. Yeah, the way this is setting up, Geno Smith is going to have to get back and either try to get in field goal range or get down and score if we get a tie game here. Third down and 11. Takes a shot, a lot of contact. Hopkins gets the flag. Trey Brown had the coverage on DeAndre Hopkins. And this is pass interference. This might be on DeAndre Hopkins. Watch DeAndre Hopkins just kind of run through. Just ran into each other. Trey Brown. Pass interference. Defense number 22. The ball be placed on spot of the foul. By the first down. And behind the play, an injured Seahawk, Draymond Jones, was slow to get up. It looked like he got caught in a position where he was uncomfortable. DeAndre Hopkins was pressing this route to the outside. You'll see him take off to the outside, give a little shake, and then stem to the inside. <laughs> and it looked like he's just got his feet. <laughs> he's just stuck. Across. Yeah, his feet were stuck in the go. ground. Couldn't do anything. So Hopkins with just two catches, but a big penalty there. Moves the ball all the way down to the 11-yard line. And it's again, I mean, this crew calls us. That one's an obvious, obvious call for them to, to make right there. First and 10. Here's Henry and his team. Derrick Henry is taken down at the six. Devin Bush and Quandre Diggs on the tackle. Once Derrick Henry starts moving, man, I mean, these outside zone runs, you like them because, because you get his momentum without having him to take steps forward towards the line of scrimmage. And he's a, he's a load to bring down when he's moving that quickly. Well, even when you get contact, there's like three or four extra yards at the end of every run just because of the momentum that he has and his size. This drive now over eight and a half minutes in length. 14th play for Tennessee. Second and four, Henry. Up the middle and stop Draymond Jones, the first to greet him. And now extracurricular and multiple flags fly. This has been a very chippy game. And it continues here late in the fourth quarter. Yeah, this is going to be on Artie Burns retaliating against Mason Kinsley. I mean, it's a great acting job. I don't think he hit him that hard. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense, number 23. Off the distance penalty, automatic first down. But it is a first down for the Tennessee Titans, and you just can't, you just can't react. <laughs> and you can see Kinsey's reaction after right. it. If this is the NBA, he'd get a penalty for flopping. But both these teams have had penalties hurt them all season long. Seattle, the most penalty yards in the NFL entering today. And on the afternoon, seven for 63 yards. It's now first and goal. And you see Derrick Henry's lined up seven and a half yards deep. They give it to Henry. And the fans chanting his name as he takes it in. Touchdown, Tennessee. 11th rushing touchdown of the year for Derrick Henry. And the Titans are back in front. Which I was going to say usually means he's going to run the football. Derrick Henry, the reason he gets that deep is that it gets him ahead of steam heading downhill. So even if the defender is unblocked in the hole, he's got the advantage as he powers his way into the end zone. 
And these fans are so smart. They realize this could be one of Derrick Henry's final home games. He's a free agent at the end of the year. His future uncertain in Tennessee. Before that snap, the fans were chanting Henry, Henry, and he took it in as the extra point by Nick Folk is good. And with 3.21 to go, the Titans have just taken a 17-13 lead on Seattle. Ryan Tannehill starting for the first time since mid-October because Will Levis is out with a high ankle sprain. Derrick Henry, a touchdown rushing and a touchdown through the air. It's DJ Dallas with a touchback. Take a look at the playoff picture just up to 21. So a chance if Seattle is able to come down the field and score where they could overtake Minnesota and move into the final playoff spot in the NFC. Well, you laid it out well, all that's on the line right here. Geno Smith has 13 game-winning drives in his career, the last coming in November against the Commanders. And right now, there's no bigger time for him to be at his best. They've got to find a way to get the ball down the field, create a chunk play to one of their big targets on the outside. Quick pass to Smith and Chippa. And Smith and Chippa trying to squeeze up to the 30. He gets to the 29-yard line. Yeah, we talk about those quick screens. That's his 22nd reception. Second most targeted on screens in the National Football League. And they do this with a lot of young players because this is an easy way to get them touches. Seattle has all three timeouts. Gino behind Metcalf. Metcalf had a little separation, but Smith could not connect. Yeah, and Gino, you know, he, he knows that one is on him. They've got a pressure look. Everybody coming right up the middle, and he's got one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and he's got plenty of space for DK and just fires it behind. I'm not sure if he was expecting him to sit down. Usually that doesn't happen on slant routes. You've got to put that ball in between the one and the four. It brings up a massive third down here. We'll see how Pete Carroll will play it if they don't pick up the first down. You've got all three timeouts in the two-minute warning. Third down and six. Gino, and he's got Lockett for a first down. Tyler Lockett on the reception. Shoved out of bounds by McCreary after a seven-yard pickup. Tyler Lockett's such a great vet for oh. the Seahawks squad. He gets up. This is just it kind of looks like an option route, but he's not ever going to go inside. He's always heading to the sideline, but just makes gift space for Gino to get that ball. A delayed handoff to Walker, and Tennessee is able to bring him down after a two-yard pickup. Harold Landry on the tackle. 235 and counting. Don't forget, coming up, State Farm postgame show. Scores and highlights with our crew back in New York. Smith, pressure's coming, and Landry has a sack. Landry now with nine and a half sacks on the season. A loss of six. Well, it's just four right up here. And what's going to make this sack happen is the coverage in the back end. you got Aziz in the middle of the field. You've got all kinds of coverage in the back end. Gino has nowhere to go with the football. Four-man rush gets home. Seattle does not get a playoff. Tennessee leads Seattle 17-13. And a big third and 14 coming for the Seahawks. And you got to imagine this is four down territory. Yeah, it absolutely is four down territory. And so that changes your mindset as a quarterback, right? You don't have to get all 14 right here. You want to get at least half of it back. Try to put yourself in a fourth and seven or less. And any completion here is positive, though. Smith with time over the middle. Smith and Chippo's got the first down. There's a flag down on the far side of the field. For the moment, it's an 18-yard gain and a Seattle first down. Yeah, I think we're going to get holding on Trey Avery out there on Tyler Lockett. But this was a shot by Geno Smith. I mean, an absolute strike. Holding. Defense number 23. That penalty is the clock. is over the play as a first down. I mean, this is the first time we've seen Geno throw downfield over the middle with this kind of velocity and confidence. Right? He knew exactly what he wanted to do with that ball, and it came out with purpose. Absolutely. No hesitation. And I usually think in critical situations you go with proven players, but Jackson Smith and Jigba has become that proven player for them on third down in his big play at the end of the game last week. Smith again, protection, and overthrows Lockett out of bounds. 
Well, Matt, you just mentioned it, but Seattle fans had that thrilling Monday night comeback win against the Eagles. That was with Drew Locke at quarterback. Now trying to come back with some late game magic for the second time in a span of six days. Yeah, and you just wonder how much of an emotional toll it takes on you having to do that, right? Making those big comebacks, these huge plays at the end of the game, overcoming all of the adversity that they've had to overcome. But right now as a player, you're not worried about all that other stuff. It's executing one play at a time. Second and ten, pressure's coming. Smith steps up, throws, and he's got a wide open Lockett. Lockett has been there all day in the clutch for Seattle, a gain of 12. I mean, this is awesome pocket movement, but an even better block from Charbonnet, stepping up and stoning this and giving Geno a, a chance to go outside to Tyler Lockett, who just runs a stop route and is sitting there all alone. That happens, though, because of what happens in the pocket. Charbonnet being unselfish, going in there, doing the dirty work, giving them a chance. And now they're going to take another look at this last play. So the play is under review. Called a complete three on the clock. And Seattle has the ball at the Tennessee 38-yard line. First down and 10. Smith over the middle. Smith and Jigba and tackled immediately by Al Shire at the 34-yard line. Yeah, minute 35 here. They had to get up, run plays quickly, but not with too much urgency. They have time, plenty of time here. And you see Tennessee on the opposite end playing this zone coverage, the pressure right here. Bringing the heat, Geno Smith to the outside and has another completion to Lockett. That's the eighth catch of the day for Tyler Lockett, which matches a season high. And this is good timing and anticipation, throwing that ball all the way to the far sideline, keeping it in front, away from the defender, in front of blocking, gets out of bounds. That's good execution in a two-minute situation. Monday night, it was Smith and Chigba, the hero, with the touchdown against the Eagles. Who will be today for Seattle? High pass and incomplete. Intended for Jake Bobo and McCreary and Avery had the coverage. The difference against the Philadelphia Eagles is that they knew on the third down situations they were going to get man coverage, but this Titans defense plays a lot of zone, so those opportunities for that shot is likely not to be there. And it's been a mix, right? One play they're playing, dropping, you know, seven guys into coverage, rushing four. The next play they're sending five. Mike Vrabel continues to think about is it worth pressuring? I want to get after Geno Smith. I want to force the ball out, but I don't want to expose my guys on the back end. All right, we've seen it intermittently every other play. Zone pressure, zone and pressure. They're creeping up to the front of the line of scrimmage now. Smith looking deep for Metcalf, incomplete, but a flag! Trey Avery on the coverage. And we talked about when that shot would come, Matt. And Exactly. You have to wait for your look to get it. And I just don't get with all of the injuries that they have in the back end going cover zero, exposing right here, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Defense number 23. The ball be placed at spot of the five. And Automatic first down. And you see Trey Avery with that little tug. I got to tell you, we've talked about Geno Smith throwing it over the middle. That ball, if he's not tugged, is exactly where it was supposed to be. Last week, Metcalf drew two pass interference penalties, and he's drawn two more today. This one moves the ball all the way down to the five. First and goal. This is where we see the shot up top. Almost every time they've been in the red area. Charbonnet up the middle, trying to push that pile forward. And he just stopped short. And now a timeout is called by Tennessee. With 104 to go, the Titans have two timeouts remaining. Yeah, Tennessee is trying to conserve some clock here. All at the two-yard line with 104 on the clock. Seattle looking for their second consecutive late game come from behind thriller. The rookie Charbonnet is the running back. Charbonnet stops. Davidson with the big play, and it's third and goal. I didn't love the same play twice in a row. Obviously, it's locking down. You're trying to get that inside duo combination to try to push into the end zone. But by doing that, 
you got to believe that the edge is going to follow the tight end. Instead, they come straight back into the backfield yeah. for a big loss. And I think it looks like a zone read, right? The, the, the opportunity to possibly pull that, but zone read doesn't work, or keeping that ball doesn't work when you have two guys that are free runners. They didn't have the numbers right there in the run game. It was man-to-man -man coverage again on the outside across the board. That was a Tennessee timeout, third and goal. Titans have one timeout remaining. Smith, end zone, and it is caught for the touchdown! Colby Parkinson! Last week it was Drew Locke. This week it's Geno Smith, and the Seahawks are back in front. Wow, this is a man's catch by Colby Parkinson. This, this, right, this is contested. It is right where it needs to be it's it's me or you getting this ball and it's not a whole lot of design right no. it was one on one this is what jimmy graham did forever right he would go down post him up and you throw the ball as hard as you can out of kobe <laughs> cody parkinson kobe parkinson comes up with a massive right, you got legs up in there you got hands you got everything up across that ball extra point by myers is good makes it a three-point lead with 57 seconds left on Monday night, Smith and Jigba scored with 28 seconds left against the Eagles. So still time for Ryan Tannen. So call two timeouts. They got to go the distance here with just one timeout remaining. But 57 seconds on the clock. Again, they just need the field goal. Field goal ties it. Seattle entered the day sixth worst in the NFL in third down conversion percentage. In this half, the Seahawks have been five out of six on third down. In that last drive, they went three for three. <laughs> Myers kicks it away. Chris Moore with a fair catch. So Tennessee will get the ball with one timeout at the 25-yard line. Don't forget, coming up, State Farm post game. Our crew is standing by in New York with all the scores and highlights coming up on the State Farm post-game show. Well, we see Gino there talked about how he had 13 game-winning drives coming into this. On the opposite side, you got a veteran guy in Ryan Tannehill who has done this a lot, led 27 uh, game-winning drives in his career. Tiki, you mentioned it. You just have to get yourself to about that 35 yard. Vikings down six in the fourth quarter and Seattle up by three. Seahawks would move into the seventh and final playoff spot in the NFC. Second and 14. Tennessee out of timeouts. Tannehill over the middle. He's got Oconquo. Oconquo picks up a first down. The 38-yard line. Wagner and Burns on the tackle. A 17-yard gain. They have to go quickly. And Tannehill will spike it to stop the clock with 35 seconds to go. Yeah, right now, time is the most important thing. It's not necessarily completions or whatever. It, it is about preserving as much time as you can. They go with the clock right there. Get into a good play call here. I like trying to force the ball to the sideline so you can get out of bounds and stop the clock, but there's still plenty of time, 35 seconds, to be able to, if you get the right look, right. drive the ball down the middle of the field. 27 yards they need to get to to get the field goal range, so they do still have the middle of the field open, especially if it's going to get you closer to the field goal opportunity. Second down and 10. Tannehill over the middle. That's Burks trying to get out of bounds, and he does at midfield. Had some play by the second-year receiver, Traylon Burks. He goes for a dozen. Yeah. Really good awareness. They go with Burks from the backside, just running the shallow cross. They've got a bunch of guys clearing it out on the opposite side. Nobody in the screen there on the defensive side of the ball. He's able to scrape through, get to the opposite end, uh, boundary, and get out of bounds. Preserves time and gives them four downs right here. The ball is on the 50 with 29 seconds to go. Tannehill in trouble and down he goes. Draymond Jones and Tennessee cannot stop the clock and they've got a number of receivers way down the field. And again, Ryan Tannehill, the one thing a veteran quarterback cannot do is take a sack in that situation. Second and 19, Tannehill to Dowell and shut that He's not going forward. Did not get out. Did not get 